All right, everybody, we're still in Chapter 4, Section 1, entitled Combining Functions and Function Composition. Within this section lies in a very, very important concept called the difference quotient. It's especially important in the study of calculus. So to get this started, I'm going to draw the graph of a function so I can see, uh, maybe show you how this is derived. Uh, so let me draw the graph of a function, maybe something like, I don't know, something like this. We do know that this is the graph of a function because it does pass the vertical line test. All right. Um, if you don't mind, I'm going to extend my um, x axis a little bit there. All right. So this is a graph of a function. Um, now, what I would like you to do is to identify two different, two random uh, points on the graph of this curve. So maybe um, one point would be like right here. Okay, that point on the curve corresponds to an x value on the x-axis, let's call it x. And it corresponds as well to a particular y value or function value named f of x. That is to say that the ordered pair for this point that we've located is x comma f of x. All right, there's one point on the curve. Let's call out a different point on the curve. Okay, maybe something like right here. This point here corresponds to a particular x value on the x-axis. Now, I'm not going to call it x again because we already called something else x. So what I would like you to consider is that this distance between this x value and the next one here, um, let's call it h units between them. Okay, so that would mean this location here in green on the x-axis would be x plus h. All right, the function value that this point in green corresponds to on the y-axis would be f of f of uh, x plus h. All right, so that is to say the ordered pair for this point in green, the ordered pair would be x plus h comma f of x plus h. Writing on top of myself a little bit here. There. So now we have two different points on the graph of our curve. All right, what I would like us to do next is to draw the secant line through these two points. When we say the secant line through these two points, what we mean is just a line that goes through our graph through these two points, all right? So something like this. This would be the secant line through these two points, okay? This is the secant line, all right? Let me move up a little bit. So what we want to do is, oops, excuse me, let me go back here, mess that up. Uh, what we want to do is find the slope of this line, okay, the slope of the secant line. All right, let me pause just for a second so I can type that in for you. All right, I got it. Let's find the slope of the secant line. Okay, so I'm going to remind you of the slope formula. The slope formula is m is equal to, you can probably say it with me, y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. All right. Um, so then what we have here is uh, the numerator is the difference of your y coordinates. Now look at your two points. You know, one of the points is in green there. The other point on the curve is, is the red point. The y-coordinates of those two points, well, one of them is f of x plus h, okay, minus the other y-coordinate, which would be f of x, all right? Let me make this fraction bar a little longer. Now, the denominator of your slope is x sub 2 minus x sub 1. So look at your two points again. All right, the green point and the red point on your curve. And the x-coordinates, well, one of them is x plus h. And the other is simply x. All right, allow me to move up a little bit for us. 
Okay, we're finding the slope of that secant line. All right, so let's continue simplifying this a little bit. So this is um, f of x plus h minus f of x. That's the difference of your y-coordinates. Nothing changed up there. But down in the denominator, something does change. Notice that x and negative x cancel, leaving you with the denominator of just h. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this here is called the difference quotient. You should buy a box and highlight it in your notes. This is something that you really, really need to um, remember. All right, it is the slope of the secant line. I'm gonna move this up for you, or actually it might be a better idea if I just kind of zoom out a little bit so you can see kind of everything in one shot. The slope of the secant line that we drew here is found by f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. All right, cool. Now let's take this and let us look at an example, all right? I'm gonna leave the difference quotient here on the screen as we look at, um, this is example four from, uh, fr from this section, all right? So here we go. So we want to evaluate the difference quotient for this function. All right, here we go. The function that we are working with is f of x, which is equal to 4x plus 5. So we're evaluating the difference quotient for a linear function. All right, so here we go. The difference quotient is written as f of x plus h, right, minus f of x, we got to figure out what all of that is, all over h, okay? So follow me um, for this example. Um, this notation here, if I can kind of highlight it for you, this notation right here that I'm highlighting um, means that you want to take x plus h, as your input into function f, okay? Now, function f is up here. I'm highlighting it now. Your input is right here. So what you need to do first is replace that input, replace x with the expression x plus h. So then it'll look like this. Four times x plus h. And don't forget the function f says and then add five to it. This that I wrote here, when I'm putting in parentheses, is just the f of x plus h part. Now, minus, the difference quotient says, then you have to subtract f of x. So we want to subtract f of x, which happens to be 4x plus 5, okay? This is the numerator of my difference quotient. Don't forget, all of this is over h, all right? Move this up a little bit for us. Your job now is to simplify this expression, all right? So we're going to distribute the 4, get 4x plus 4h plus 5. Distribute this negative, minus 4x, minus 5. Don't forget, everything is over h. Now, you can combine like terms. Don't, also, don't forget that um, you have some terms that cancel. 4x and negative 4x cancel. 5 and negative 5 also cancel. And so then all you're left with here is 4h over h. Yeah. And you can see that this fraction, of course, you can, you can uh, divide out the common factor of h to get your final answer of 4. 4 is the difference quotient for our function, what was it? Let me move up here. Our function is 4x plus 5, yeah? So the difference quotient for the function 4x plus 5 is 4. You did it. All right, cool. Let's see if we can do it again. And this next example will be more challenging, all right? It's going to be more challenging, but we can definitely do it. Definitely do it. All right, I got the board ready. Example number 5. Uh, the last example for the difference quotient. Evaluate the difference quotient for this function. All right, this is a function that you and I are dealing with now. Um, it will be g of x 
is equal to x squared minus 2x. So this is a quadratic function named g. All right, now do you remember what the difference quotient says? The difference quotient is going to be uh, g of x plus h, not f of x plus h because the name of this function is not f, it's g. So g of x plus h minus g of x all over, do you remember? All over h. This is the difference quotient, okay? So here we go. I want you to focus, please, your attention on this first expression here, all right? This expression says to take, or this notation, I should say, this notation says you, you're supposed to take x plus h, the expression x plus h, and plug it into g. Now, the thing that makes this a little harder is that function g has two places that you want to re, uh, substitute x plus h. Right here is x squared. That's going to be x plus h quantity squared. And then right here where it says minus 2x, that's going to be minus 2 times x plus h. Let me see if I can show that for you. So x plus h quantity squared minus 2 times x plus h. Okay. Now, what I just finished writing here, let me section this off in um, some grouping symbols here. All of this is just g of x plus h. We still have to subtract g of x according to the difference quotient. Now, g of x is, right up here, it's x squared minus 2x. Okay, for your difference quotient, all of this is your numerator, and it's all over h. All right, everybody? I hope you followed that. Okay, so let's we have some simplifying to do. Um, we know that x plus h quantity squared means x plus h times x plus h. So some of you are familiar with FOIL. You're going to want to FOIL that out. Um, and then at the same step, we want to distribute this negative 2 here. And we also want to distribute this negative here to that binomial there. All right? So let's do that. So we'll have minus 2x minus 2h minus x squared, watch your signs, plus 2x. And then don't forget, all of this is over h. Got to move this up a little bit. Yeah, here we go. All right. Do you see anything canceling at this point? Any terms canceling? Oh, yeah. Uh, let's see. Positive 2x, negative 2x so far. All right. We'll have more to cancel in just a second. Okay. So let's FOIL this out or distribute. So it's going to be x times x, which is x squared, right? And then you will have next um, x times h, which is xh, plus, and then continue distributing h times x, which is hx, which is the same thing as just xh, right? Plus, and then finally, h times h, which we know to be h squared. Now, let's not forget to bring down the rest of this numerator. So minus 2h minus x squared, all right? And don't forget, all of this is over h. This is a lot, okay? Do you see anything cross-canceling here? Yeah, negative x squared on the back end and positive x squared in the front. They both cancel. And also notice these don't cancel, but they, they do combine because they're like terms, both of the xh terms. So then you have what? 2xh um, plus h squared minus 2h, everything over h. All right, let's keep going. <laughs> I think what we can do now is to factor out an h, which is the common factor in the numerator. Everybody has an h. So factor out an h, it will leave you with 2x plus h minus 2, all over h. All right, cool. Now you can see you can cro or divide out the common factor of h. Again, got to move up here a little bit. All right, so what we have now is simply 2x plus h minus 2. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the difference quotient 
for our quadratic function. Let me see if I can zoom out here so you can see it all. There it is. The quadratic function named g of x is equal to x squared minus 2x. The difference quotient for this quadratic function is 2x plus h minus 2.